Checking range, we've got range. Checking facing, we've got facing. Calculating the numbers. Rolling to hit. Three medium lasers at your battle master over there. Bro, only two. What do you mean I have three? No, one's rear facing. Rear facing? Let me see that that tech sheet here. Something I missed. Now, lots of mechs come in lots of different configurations. The core configuration, but also variants. And that's before we even get into homebrew. The ability, the possi- the ability, the possibility to mount rear firing weapons. And if it's one of those machines that you have not played in some time, I mean, there's a lot of battle tech going on in my head. A lot of mechs that I really enjoy playing, but those lines kind of get blurred. And sometimes I select a mech and I forget that there's a rear firing weapon. Um, we also see this strangely with certain vehicles. There's certain quirky vehicles out there. One of them is a um, short range missile tank, um, spacing on the name a little bit. It's not the dedicated SRM carrier. It's got a lower battle value buy-in, doesn't quite have as many missiles, but it has a rear firing flamer. And in the tech manual, the way it explains it, the narrative is this way it can fire and turn and run and kind of cover a retreat with a flamer. So you see these mechs and you see these machines with rear mounted weapons and you ask yourself in battle tech where we spend so much tactica. I mean, look, we do the best we can. And this might be a little bit harsh for the newer players, but it is true. If you are getting shot with rear armor, if someone is sinking firepower into your rear vehicles or tanks, you've either done something wrong tactically or just you're in pretty serious trouble. So we do our best to, to literally put that slab of armor, that, that central armor facing forward to engage all of our weapons facing forward. Why take a machine or why utilize rear firing weapons or given the battle value configuration if that's a weapon that tactically I'm not going to use 99% of the time, it's wasted battle value. It's, it's another shot. It's another possibility. So in exploring that, there are certain mechs, usually at the, the higher battle value tonnage, because we have more slots, that have rear-firing weapons. And the thought is, this gives you a chance to at least zap something or potentially drive something away, or to engage multiple targets if you're surrounded. So how do we utilize this in terms of dealing with rear-firing weapons? And as always, we'll turn it over into the comments for fellow mech warriors. One of the ways that I have utilized an assault mech, uh, looking at something uh, like the Battlemaster or or other machines that would have a rear-firing laser in certain configurations, there are times where you need to hold a certain point. Either I'm advancing and now things have happened and I need to retreat or the terrain is such. Uh, there was one hex map I remember. I'm not sure which catalyst map it is. Um, I think it's in the expansion grass uh, grass hex map expansion. But essentially it's, it's two rather uh, level three hills next to each other with a narrow pass. And uh, we had randomly placed objectives that we had to obtain. And two of them were kind of in this this valley area. So we knew this was where the showdown was going to be. Absolutely. I took the usual LRM carriers. I had some longbows. I had a lot of long range support. Jaeger Mac, Jaegermeister there laying down the, the auto cannons, a pair of blackjacks laying down auto cannons. Anything that popped up on that hill, those hills was going to get lighted up. So we, as we advanced, um, I moved quickly I took the position in between the two hills and I wanted to just hang out there. I wanted to put up what's called a speed bump in wargaming. Speed bump is where you send a unit out and it's basically to slow down the rest of your opponent's army. With that in place, you try and last as long as you can. So having a, sometimes you'll have a heavier and assault mech with rear firing weapons where they can move to a position and just hold it. And your opponent is going to surround you. And you're going to try and last as long as you possibly can, either to allow mission objectives and other units to pull away or to reinforce. At that point, at that point, you will have um, rear firing weapons. So at least they can do something if you're surrounded. Other times there might be a case where if a lighter machine does make it behind me, look, if, if a hunchback makes it behind me, 
I'm in a lot of trouble at whatever weight class. But if a lighter bug mech makes it behind me, a, a locust or a wasp or a stinger, I don't want to turn around and confront it because I'm probably engaged against other targets. But at the same time, I don't want it to have um, free range. And I'll declare primary on the other target, secondary on the machine behind me. At least it's a zap laser at something to drive off a light mech or, or at least kind of go toe to toe and, and try to blast it for a turn or two. So from that perspective, there are times where rear firing weapons come into play. Um, were they ever that effective? Not that I can see, but certainly it is better than nothing if you're mounting the tonnage. Side note, not really rear firing weapons, but something to be aware of. And, and before we jump to that side note, yes, if you have rear firing weapons on a mech, at least be aware of them. But there are certain mechs based on the design configuration that can literally flip their their arms or their weapons behind them. Um, the Jenner, the quick draw, design quirk or not, um, the longbow. That's where things kind of get really interesting because now someone can move behind you and they think they're safe and then they're going to eat both primary weapon paddles or, or both primary weapons. That's where things get a little bit interesting. But certainly to be in mind, to look at, to consider, and something is better than nothing, but your thoughts on rear-firing weapons.